In Newcastle, Pennsylvania, on the corner of Lincoln Avenue and Highland Avenue, you will find a monumental building that was constructed over 85 years ago. Occupying an entire city block, the Scottish Rite Cathedral took years to complete and still stands as one of the most noticeable features in Newcastle. Known to locals simply as the Cathedral, it was a dream of Freemason brother John S. Wallace, a dream that later became a reality. Freemasonry is one of the oldest and largest fraternal organizations where men and men only come together to serve a common purpose. They are formed on the basis of brotherly love, relief, and truth. They seek to make good men better. A man can become a Freemason on his own free will as long as two current members can vouch for his reputation. The Constitution of Freemasonry is openly published. A Freemason does believe that not all ceremonies and procedures should be shared with the world, much like any other group. John S. Wallace was such a Freemason. He was a Masonic official of the area and the first commander-in-chief of the Valley of Newcastle. At 33 years old, he dreamt of a grand lodge where all Freemason groups could come together. Several men earned their Freemason degrees after passing through the Scottish Rite Cathedral. It took six years beginning in 1918 to acquire the land where the cathedral now stands, but only one year to build the massive structure. When enough funds had been acquired, there was to be a parade to celebrate. Thousands of spectators attended the cornerstone laying in 1925. The Newcastle newspaper informed locals that hotel rates would be at a premium. There was also an article that focused on how several stories in the downtown area would be closed for two hours to witness a parade after a suggestion from the mayor. While I am perfectly willing to do this, I believe it would appear better as a suggestion and following out the sentiments of the merchants who have broached the subject, I would suggest that the stores in the downtown district close from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock Wednesday. The parade traveled through downtown and the Washington Center before ending at the cathedral. 2.6 million bricks, 245,000 feet of electrical wire, 2,076 light bulbs, 880 outlets, 436 doors, and 210 windows went into the creation of the Scottish Rite Cathedral that was created by architect R.G. Schmidt and contractor S.M. Cecil that were both from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Your new Scottish Rite Cathedral is a distinct addition to Newcastle. Please accept my heartiest congratulations. John S. Fisher, Governor of Pennsylvania. Four dining rooms, a kitchen, lodge rooms, dressing rooms, ballrooms, mezzanine, an auditorium are just a few of the dozens of rooms in the Scottish Rite Cathedral. In 1925, the fully equipped cathedral cost $1,600,000. It was created at the cost of only 38 cents a cubic foot. The dimensions of the local building are impressive. At 244 feet wide, 181 feet deep, and 110 feet high, the cathedral is structurally sound. One of the more noticeable features are the stone columns located at the front of the building. Each of the columns are 42 feet high and weigh 32,000 pounds. Several horse-drawn wagons transported the columns to the Masonic Temple. During the original construction, the builders ran into quicksand on the hillside behind the building. The workers placed several pieces of wood on top and in the soft soil until it no longer sank, a process known as piling. The original blueprint called for a four-lane bowling alley, but it was never developed. However, that space did come in handy once when the area was used by the National Rifle Association for target practice. The architecture was not the only impressive feature of the cathedral. The building's technological advancements were ahead of its time as well. In 1926, the cathedral had air conditioning, but nothing like today's model. 
Enormous fans were placed around the building that could circulate cold air. The cold air was supplied by using large blocks of ice that were placed in a refrigeration room and blown throughout the building. In order for this to work, there was a well-developed drain system that the melting ice had to travel through to prevent flooding. The water then made its way to the city sewage system. When looking at the front of the Scottish Rite Cathedral, your eyes will be drawn to the veranda, lobby, and mezzanine. Onyx pillars line the wall and stained glass chandeliers that bear the Scottish Rite masonry insignia hang 40 feet above. Weather permitting, 1,000 guests could enjoy the roof garden. Located at the top of the cathedral, a long trellis was built to support ivy vines that provided shade where events could be held. However, this area only lasted for a few short years due to financial constraints. The cathedral has four banquet rooms that are available for renting. With imported crystal chandeliers, each room is more beautiful than the next. The rooms can be separated by bifold doors or entirely open to create one large room fit for 1,300 people at one time. The most elegant of all the rooms is the ballroom. When the Freemasons were originally creating the room, they installed maple hardwood floors with springs beneath them specifically for dancing. In 1926, the kitchen was state-of-the-art. It contained an electric dishwasher, mechanical potato peeler, dough mixer, and a pie baking system that could cook 100 pies at one time. To feed guests, the cathedral had purchased china that could accommodate 4,000 guests at a single time. 2,800 guests can fill the Scottish Rite Cathedral's three-tiered auditorium. The large room has three crystal chandeliers suspended from the ceiling that were designed for the cathedral. The largest chandelier in the center weighs 2,300 pounds and contains 186 light bulbs. The two adjacent chandeliers weigh 1,500 pounds each. It had the largest stage between New York and Chicago. At 80 feet wide, 45 feet deep, and 65 feet high to the gridiron, it is still the second largest stage in the region today. When looking at the stage, a viewer can see Masonic engravings around both the stage and the room. Originally, the stage was used as a theater, playing top-run films. Once, wild animals, ponies, and an elephant were on the cathedral stage when the circus came to Newcastle. From the back of the stage, through a service door, miles of Newcastle can be seen. The lighting control switchboard is 8 feet high by 12 feet long, controlling 165 border lights, 88 footlights, 8 predetermined lights, and several other stage lights. The switchboard leaves for 999 possible lighting combinations. Several memorable performers have been on the Scottish Rite stage. Johnny Cash, Charlie Daniels, and Reba McIntyre are just a few of the unforgettable performances. In 1926, George Greer, the former president and general manager of Newcastle Steel and Tin Plate Company, donated a Mueller organ. The placing of this instrument in the new cathedral is to be in remembrance of my dear brother Charles, and myself as a memorial from the Greer brothers. The Newcastle News called it one of the finest pipe organs in western Pennsylvania. It took more than two weeks to install and tune the massive instrument. With more than 5,000 pipes, the organ still plays today and can be lowered to beneath the stage. Originally, the organ cost $65,000. There are only two of these organs in existence. Today, the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra uses the cathedral as their home away from home when they aren't performing in Heinz Hall. Beneath the stage are several lighted mirrors where performers prepare, like for the yearly Nutcracker performance. Just off stage is a dressing room where performers can prepare and relax. Performers like Jerry Seinfeld have gone on stage after being in this room. During the Great Depression, the Scottish Rite Cathedral was temporarily lost. The Masons were expected to maintain a constant revenue of $130,000 a year, but fell below that mark. The cathedral claimed bankruptcy and was taken over by Lawrence County. The doors were closed and the building went unused for several years. 
In 1944, local businessmen and masons came together to form the Cathedral Foundation. Their sole purpose was to collect money and pool funds to buy the building back from the county, which they did successfully. Today, the Cathedral Foundation serves as a nonprofit organization, as most of the funds are used for maintenance and to pay bills. Yearly, the cathedral costs close to $400,000 to operate. It collects this money primarily through room rentals. Today, anniversary parties, bridal shows, banquets, sports shows, and community gatherings are regularly held in the cathedral. Mr. Marvin Lebby, the president of the Cathedral Board of Directors, explains what his experience was like when he first saw the Scottish Rite Cathedral. It was awe-inspiring. It's just looked at the building in awe, the enormous, the immensity of the building, the construction, and just the building itself. Dawn Paroli, the cathedral coordinator, explains why she believes many people still enjoy renting out the cathedral today. A lot of it is, is the history. Um, a lot of them have danced here in the different studios, and so the cathedral holds a lot of fond memories for them. But I, I think the biggest selling point is just the architecture. I mean, there just isn't another place like this anywhere here in this area. Several other Masons have fond memories of the first time they saw the building, like George Morrow, the Commander-in-Chief for the Valley of Newcastle. I was just in awe whenever I was, you know, basically around 12 to 14 years old and of the building, and then whenever I joined going through, and the degrees that I received here are very memorial to me. I remember them very distinctly. Other members have had brothers, uncles, and fathers involved even earlier. Kenneth Scheiderly explains his family's connection. Well, I'll tell you what, my father was a laborer when they dug the basement for this cathedral. Mason Carl Chandler admits that he spends a lot of time at the Scottish Rite Cathedral. I grew up in the building, so it means a lot emotionally to me. It's a, I guess it's my home away from home. At least my wife tells me that. <laughs> Although many families are involved, the Masons want community members to know more about themselves and the building. Just the historical significance of the building and the fact that the Masonic fraternity has met here uh, for a long period of time and it's a beautiful building and I think that people would enjoy going through and see the historical artifacts that are here. Not only do they have original historic artifacts, but historical importance as well. The significance, the historic nature of the building. We're on the National Historic Register. With a large historical building come several large rooms to decorate. The whole interior, you know, for the plays and all the popular things, the beautiful chandeliers and so on. I mean, it's like, I mean, you have to drive a ways to find something comparable with this. Yeah. Mason Joseph Weincheck believes that the auditorium has a lot to offer. The auditorium, it, 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 uh, it has fantastic acoustics. We, uh, we have a friend who plays the uh, bass uh, uh, trombone for, for the Pittsburgh Symphony. And he said that, that the symphony loves to come here because it has better acoustics than Heinz Hall. So I thought that that was a great compliment. And if, if we could get the PSO up, up here more often, or even get uh, the, the symphony from, from Youngstown or other musical groups in, in here. Even with big names coming into the cathedral, the Masons want the community to be a part of the building. Rob Cummings shares his thoughts and what he wants local residents to know. That we are here, that we are open, that you can get married here, you can have wedding receptions here, you can have concerts here, uh, please, that, that we're here and that we'll work with you and your budget and uh, please uh, be aware that we're here and we want to welcome you and, and let you utilize the facility. Although the Scottish Rite Cathedral is no longer seen as a building of great significance with awe-striking grandeur, it will always be a monument to a small town. As the Newcastle News stated on July 1, 1926, it is a marvel, this new ancient accepted Scottish Rite Cathedral a building that will astound you when it is completed, a building that will be a showplace for the fraternity building, and when completed, will stand out as a monument to the faith of the men responsible for it.